Ta 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 ta. Hello. Yes, it's time to start the show of League of Legends Champion Tales. If you guys really want to support this channel, I suggest head over to our Patreon page, check out our weekly awards. I don't do monthly awards. Heck no, I offer you guys weekly awards. Well, what's going on, my friends? Welcome back to League of Legends Champion Tells. My name is Kat, and today we're going back into reacting to some of the champs. For those of you wondering about the regions and everything, they will also continue, but I think it's about time that we finally move on to some of our awesome champs. And the next one is... My girl, Ari. So for those of you who did tune in to our gameplay footage of League of Legends, I thank you guys. Because I was playing the tutorial mode, and I was like going into beast mode already, and I'm all like... <sighs> I'm addicted to this. So, I picked Ari for a few reasons. When I was playing all the other champs, I was all like, it was a weird connection. Like, I don't know about you guys, but when you sit down and you play League of Legends for the first time ever, and you literally are controlling them, and go like this and that, you feel a connection. I literally felt throughout my hand, no joke, when how all the other characters were playing. Even Lux, like I do like Lux and I have to like train more with Lux too. But when I was playing as Ari, something clicked. Like, you know, it felt more smooth. It felt better to play. And it, it felt mighty fine good, if I must say. <laughs> so I think now that you know some of the champions that I will be maining as, and Ari will be one of them, obviously. I want to spoil her rotten and buy her all the skins. Yes, I'm going to go broke over this. So support us on Patreon, please, so I can buy all the skins for my baby Ari. <laughs> so just so you guys know, before we do start this, I want to give a few updates and announcements. Be sure to check out all of our links in the description down below, hence the anime sound effects. So you can follow us on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and now we have a Facebook page. Huzzah! Facebook! Awesome! We also have a few things going on on Twitch we'll be starting soon. We're gonna have daily streams there, and it could be hangouts, casual chats, maybe watchathons, and of course, League of Legends streams. And I'm gonna get it so into it. If you guys did see the gameplay, please, if you haven't, check it out already. A beast comes out of me. So what we're gonna be doing is, for those of you who do miss the Twitch streams, um, we're not gonna just directly upload all of the gameplay onto YouTube because that's more for just on Twitch. Derek will edit all of the content that we stream on Twitch and put it onto YouTube. So YouTube's gonna be like our second thing because I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, I love live streaming. I did a lot of live streaming in my past job. I'd love to do like maybe a morning talk show with you guys. I'd love to do that. That is my goal. That is literally seriously my goal to have possibly in the future like a live audience and do these types of things and have you guys come down, watch it live, like that. I'm telling you, if you are not following us on Twitch yet, please do. Because a lot of our content is going to be there while YouTube is more of a like place where we put our other extra content. And if you'd like me to produce more League of Legends champion tales per week, I could easily do four to six episodes a week if I wanted to, if we're fully funded. So be sure to check that out. We are not even close to our goal of being fully funded. So be sure to check that out if you want more League of Legends champion tales a week. Because I could do one, two per week, possibly just one. And then when we get fully funded on Patreon, then I'm able to produce a lot. So just just keeping you guys in mind with that and also streaming on twitch will help out a lot with the funds as well so stay tuned for that because donating to streamers is very important if you want them to continue streaming yes this is my job i gotta make that clear to you guys this is my job so if you like your content and you want extra content too just check out our patreon page but I believe that is all of our announcements for today, other than be sure to give us a like on Facebook, because that's brand new, and we're gonna have extra content there as too. As too, that made no sense. As well, why don't we get into the episode of League of Legends Champion Tales with our girl, Ari, who is one of my mains. All right, we are on Ari's page. Look at my little fox, Bibi. She is my little queen. I love her so much. I mean, again, I don't know why I felt like the connection. I, I thought I was gonna main as Lux. Literally thought I was gonna main as Lux. You guys thought I was gonna main as Lux, but I had that connection with Ari. So I'm gonna spoil her rotten and give her all the skin she needs. Never thought I was gonna say that. But anyway, guys, let's get reading, reacting, and into 
League of Legends Champion Tales. Let's go. The Nine-Tailed Fox. Ari. Human emotions can be more volatile than even the deepest magic. So, what I like about Ari 2 is like, like with Ionia and everything, it's very magical. It's a magical place where it's filled with peace and everything. So I love, I love how they're hinting at magic again. Because magic, as you know, is very big when it comes to, um, Ionia, where she does res- where she is, like, alive, where she lives, where she resides, that's the word. So her role is a mage. Oh, really now? She is a mage. I would actually think that what- this is the thing, when I connected with her when I was playing the game and everything, I never thought that I would play as a mage. I never thought I would do that. So that's very interesting. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that's- yeah, Ionia. We already explored that region, my friends. So related champion, so she's a- Vastaya, Taya, Va Va Vaste Vastaya, I think it's Vastaya. I mean, if that sounds more Ukrainian, like Vastaya, yes. Yeah, hello, I'm mean, Ukrainian, yeah, I'm full blooded Ukrainian. But <laughs> um, you guys are also saying that I'm gonna end up loving all the Vastians, which, as my, some of my favorite champs, are already residing there in Ionia. So that's fun to know, because I'm probably gonna main as all of them. So, related champions, we got Wukong. Oh, I remember you, yeah, you were mentioned. Game info. As you know, we explore everything here first, and then we move down. So, her biography. We'll get to that in a minute, but first I want to explore her game info. Let's go. So her health. Okay, this is all her health. Armor, attack, speed, magic reset. So this is her champion spotlight. Well, as you guys know, Spotlight Saturdays is our series to tune in for that. So I'm not going to watch this yet. Because, as you know, videos are more separate for reactions. But just so you know, Ari will be featured on Champion Spotlight. So her abilities. So Vastian Grace. Whenever Ari's spells hit a champion two times within a short period, she briefly gains movement speed. Which is something I need to practice. Which is something I think is really cool. Because if you hit him twice, you get something out of it. So Orb of Deception. Ari sends out and pulls back her orb, dealing magic damage on the way out and true damage on the way back. After earning several spell hits, Ari's next orb hits will restore her health. So I've been using this one a ton. Like if you've noticed when I was playing it, I had a lot of times when I use Orb of Deception. I think that might be my favorite move of hers, a uh, Foxfire. Ari releases three Foxfires that lock onto and attack nearby enemies. So they, oh, cool. Okay, so that, that does lock on. So let's say you're like, you're surrounded, you could use this. I was using this only when I was surrounded. I was trying to not, not use it up. I love this one. Charm is literally when she goes, I'm gonna blow you a kiss. And then suddenly it lures people in. So Ari blows a kiss that damages and charms an enemy it encounters, causing them to walk harmlessly towards her and take more damage from her abilities. So it's like, it's if you think about Pokemon, for instance, when you use a certain attack, it charms them and then what happens? They die. So <laughs> And for some reason, in my gameplays, I was killing Jinx like 50 times. So Spirit Rush, Ari dashes forward and fires Essence Bolts, damaging nearby enemies. Spirit Rush can be cast up three times before going on cooldown. So I don't think I really use this a lot. Again, Orb of Deception is what I was using a lot. And then also I used, I used Charm a few times and then Foxfire I was using as well. But Orb of Deception is obviously my favorite. I need to learn more about this. I need to use Vastian Grace more, but hey, it's like, it's cool. And now her skins, we're moving on to her skins. Now that we are here, we might as well just react to these as of right now. Uh, the default skin, oh my god, look at her tail, it's so cool. She does have nine tails. Hey, what kind of Pokemon would she have? She'd have a nine tails. But if she is a fox, can a fox have a fox? It's nine... I don't know, just, I don't even know. So this is, this is the default skin. She does have pointy fingernails. You don't want to get close to that. She will scratch the crap out of you and probably gouge out your eye. Ooh, I like her hair. So like, she looks complete. If you were to compare this to the other one, she looks completely different. And that's really cool. I like how she's like inviting you in, like, come with me. Yes, I will. You are like a great sister to me or my daughter, whichever one, but she's cool. That's why I'm, I'm glad I'm going to be going on adventures with you. I'm so glad, Ari! Yes! Adventure time! Great show if you haven't checked it out. I like how it looks like it's like, like the wind is blowing as well. Very neat. Very neat. Ooh! I like how her ears are more showcased in this one. Oh, that's really cool. 
I also like how her, um, like her hair color changes and then her also her tail changes too. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, oh cool. I mean, this one's cool, but I mean, I, this, this is the thing. Whoever I main as, I want to buy all the skins for them. This one looks more like she's a fighter. Oh, cool. I don't like as much as the other ones, though. Dang, girl! Is she a pop star? Is she, is she a pop? Is she a pop star? What? She is a singer. She is a singer of something. Uh, this isn't this isn't KDA. This is something else. Oh my god. Is there is there like some kind of music video for this? Like a skin reveal? She's obviously a pop star because you see like the audience in the back. They're like, we love you! Oh my god! <laughs> yes, Ari. We love you. You are our queen. Oh, that one's look this one looks completely different than the other ones. Oh like, oh okay, I see that now. There's a little fox within her orb. Uh, duh. I don't did the other one? I have to see if the other one's on that. Ari looks more sinister in this one. Because in the other one, she's more like calm looking. Not the pop one. The pop one was more like, woo, quirky, fun. But this one, she looks much more sin sinister. So my question to you guys is, do the skins affect their moods and also their traits and their voice lines and everything? Because this this doesn't, like, if I were to say this was Ari, I wouldn't believe it. Because she looks completely different and also lots more, uh, much more sinister, I must say. What? This is an animu. This is literally an anime, excuse me? Ari, but she's literally like me because I have more guy friends than I do have girlfriends because girls are just catty and some of them are just mean. I don't, I don't even have that many girls as friends. That's funny. But this is like, oh my God. I wonder who she's texting. Who's in the back there? Oh my God, you guys are so cool. He cool. I like him. Who is this? Who is this? Wait, why do I not know who this is? He's like, he, dang boy. Whoever that is, he'll be my husband though. <laughs> oh, but I like how she looks again. It's like, you could tell it's Ari based on, you know, some of the, the markings she has on her face. Oh, that's awesome. So is this more like video game-ish? Is Ari a gamer? What? Is she a gamer? Because I see like that is connected to her stash there. Video games are coming out of that. Um, yeah, she's in a video game because I see, I see down there. Oh, that's cool. At least, because I think you guys said that these skins are all based on events. Oh, she she hit the minion. And they're like, oh, that, that minion is legit like, I don't want to be here. Please, I don't want to be here right now. Oh, you're going to be squashing my bros. Please leave us alone. My God, girl, you gotta calm the heck down. I want to destroy me. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of that guy on SpongeBob. When SpongeBob got really dark, when the guy takes his, like, uh, I don't know, his, his spear, and he was like, <sighs> not today. That's what this minion reminds me of. This guy right here, that is legit who he reminds me of. All right, Ari, you're so cool. I want your, I want, oh, her, I'll get it. Her headphones are her ears. Nice touch there, but question is, are her ears hidden inside of those? You never know. We know what this is! <laughs> so this is our girl Ari, and she is a Star Guardian. You guys remember the Star Guardians? Yeah, I know you remember them. Yeah, so she right now is a Star Guardian. I've made so much content with the Star Guardians. I'm obviously gonna get this skin. She looks awesome. I love the little, again, I would love to cosplay this. This would be so cool. The, the tails would be really hard to cosplay with, but I love her little like bow thingy that she has in her hair. And also I, what I love about it too is with this design, it's like that little purple bowish thing, the ribbon is also included here, here, and like the purple's on her neck, the purple's on her dress. So this is again paying homage to super girls and like magical girls. So for League to do that, they know their animu. They know their animu. All right, Ari, they served you justice, my queen. Again, this is, I love, like what I'm gonna do just so you guys do know, 
is there's gonna be two forms of reactions here on the channel. One, my blind reaction to going into all the cinematic shorts, all the music videos. And then when I have more knowledge of each of the characters, I'm gonna go in again, knowing who they are, and have that reaction that you guys had when these came out. Because when I went in blind, I'm like, I don't know who these guys are. I'm just basing it off of their designs. They're pretty cool, awesome. But I think it's gonna be even more of a huge reaction for me when I rewatch the Rewatch the music videos, rewatch the shorts and everything because I'll know who the characters are. And you guys have actually requested that I do, do this because it's like you have a completely different perspective and point of view on who these characters are and like what type of like reaction that you guys would have. So I'm in awe. Like when I go and I look at the gifs, or if you say gifs or gifs, I say gifs, so don't punch me. Um of Ari for KDA, I'm like, she is so awesome. She was literally just so awesome. And like her tail, how it's crystallized. Like if anyone were to cosplay as this, it would be so hard to do because you'd have to make like the crystals, but it's like, man, it is so cool. But again, I'm gonna have a completely different perspective on this music video when I know all of the characters. I already know a few of them. I've done reactions to them for Spot uh, Spotlight Saturdays, one of our other League of Legends content that we have here. And also, of course, with doing champion tales, learning about them and just overall, like overall from the game. But dang, I'm definitely getting this skin. Don't worry about that. This is definitely on the list. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta make my sh make sure my daughter is or my sister. I don't know. Like, make some votes. Upvote. Is she my daughter or is she my sister? Let me know because either way, she's gonna get spoiled by me. And then we get the prestige edition. The prestige skins look beautiful. I am not lying here, my friends. They are beautiful. Like the hair. I want that haircut. Like, I already have, I already get crazy haircut already, but that is, like, girl. Yes, I actually prefer this one more than I do with the KDA, and don't hate me for this, but I don't know what it is about this, maybe just be the gold, but I think it's her hair, because I think that fits her more, but like, Ari, when you compare her original look, the default skin to this, like, girl, who's matured so much? Who has grown up? But she, yeah, I would actually, I mean, Huh, maybe 100,000 subscribers. I've always wanted to like dye my hair white for some reason. I don't know why, but possibly I might do it for 100, 100K. Possibly, I don't know. I'll let you guys in on that possibly down in the future, but this would be great to cosplay as too. Like I would love to stream dressed as the characters that I am playing as, my mains. I gotta find at least a few mains for myself, which again, I'm gonna try out all the champs, so. Uh, a new Dawn, the cinematic. Again, she looks so different compared to what she looks like in KDA, compared, like she looks like a bean here. In KDA, she looks like she grew up. <laughs> oh yes, the short story, yes. How many, whoa, there's a lot. <gasps> yes, queen. Look at you, you're so pretty. So we're gonna be reading all of these. Oh, the art gallery. Oh, there's a fan art showcase. That's so sweet. Featured Link, the art of League of Legends. Cool. Cinematic behind the scenes. We're also going to be reacting to that. And then that's about it. But let's go and go in order. So I think, actually before we go to the short stories, because these, these take a long time, let's look at the art gallery. So here's our concept art. And which I'm obsessed with concept art. This is the, what she her default look is. I love the reds. You know, I'm always a big fan of characters when it's like they have the reds, the blacks, and the whites, and they're all mixed together. My grandmother loved those colors mixed together. So uh, I really do appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Ari's concept, nine tails dress. Oh, that's so cool. She looks so different. A lot different. Like she looks, she actually looks like her face looks like Barbie. <laughs> she looks like a Barbie doll. But yeah, I love, I love this because this is like way before. Like this is like the concept of it. Wow. So she looks very peaceful, very peaceful. And then cinematic Ari concept. Again, she looks much older. Like the cinematic, um, she looked like more of a bean. But this is kind of close. Actually, it is. It's very close. It's like her. She's much shorter in the cinematic, but I love this. I love the glowing. I love that, I love that. Ah, oh, it's so good. The artists, the artists behind this are so talented. So that was the concept art. So fan art showcase, I wanna see this. I'm always a huge fan 
of fan art. When people actually, because you know, my, my whole thing is geek culture, but also seeing what people create. Oh my God. Oh my, there's so many. Ho, okay, so I guess we're gonna be looking at all of them. Hopefully there is a next button. Oh good, there is. Soul Stealer. This is art by Ippos. Look how beautiful this is, okay? The, the blues? Oh my lord. Because I need to get more League of Legends, like, like not even just artwork to display here, but just like merchandise. Look at her. Oh my god, but these blues, I, everything with blues, it just invites my mind in. It makes me feel much more peaceful, so oh, I appreciate that. Oh, I can zoom in. Oh, that is so cool. So cool. Oh my god, look at this! Snack attack! Artist unknown. Oh my god. Where's Ari? Oh, Ari's up there. Oh my god, look at the bees. There's Timo. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I'll be playing as Teemo. For those of you who join in on our Twitch, I've said that I might be playing as Teemo just to annoy the heck out of people, but also to uh, cosplay as Teemo too. Just going to cons, cosplaying as Teemo and annoying the heck out of people. Yes, I will do that. Oh, oh, oh my god. This is by Dick Sniff. I can't, I can't say that. <gasps> Look at them! There's Ari. Ari's just like, I'm center stage, girl. I'm, oh, look! Oh, she looks so cute. Where's Timo? Where's Timo? I gotta find, oh my God, what is wrong with me? I gotta find Timo. Is that Annie? I think that's Annie there. Oh, is that Riven holding Annie? I think. See, I'm, I think I'm learning, I think I'm learning. Um, um, where's Timo? Is that, there's Jinx. Is that the other Jinx? Are the, are the Star Guardians here? I don't... No, that's not... This is Jinx. That Jinx is actually smiling there. Where's Teemo? Are these all the girls? I think this is the... Uh, I think these are all the ladies of League. <laughs> ladies of League. Yeah, women of... Oh, we got Cat. Read it. It literally says women of League. Oh, my God, Cat. Teemo's on a woman. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, see, this is the thing. This is how I felt. You know, this is how I, where is Ari? Where are you, Ari? I think Ari's there. You think, yeah, 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 I think that's Ari right there. This is the thing, when I was playing League, I got into the game. I was like, I'm, I'm just from tutorial mode alone. I'm like, I'm, I'm in the rift, I'm here. Here are the characters. And when you play, you connect with the characters. You know, you feel for them when they die, when they get hurt, you're, you're in this state of fear. So like, this is, this captures what exactly how I felt. Like they're here with me. And I always like to remind people, even pro players, that's like, they're not just characters, you connect with them. While you're playing, you connect with these characters. So it's so powerful. All right, moving on. There's our girl. There's our girl. She's so pretty. I love her eyes too. Wow. Yes. And this is by Saki Michian. I cannot say it. I like how they include their links too. Oh, look. Wait, is it? Oh my god. Who? Oh, oh my god. I like the blues again. Oh. Friendship. I feel like I've seen this one before somewhere. Where have I seen this art? But I like that. Oh my god, oh my god, look at the little fox. The little fox. Oh, yeah, be. I like these colors. Absolutely adore these colors. Wow. Wow, the lighting on this, the lighting on this. Oh my god, she's a chef! Breakfast of champions. Oh, is she cooking people? Is she, yeah. Dude, there he is! The, the robot guy. He gives me so many problems when I play as Ari. And she's a Mumu. Oh my god, so that's, that's kind of really funny for me. That's like an inside joke for me right now because he gave me so many problems when I was playing. I'm like, get the heck away from me. Oh, Wukong and Ari. Is that the ship Pikachu? Is that the ship? I think we might have a ship, my friends. Oh my god, I'm going to end up shipping them, aren't I? Yes, Arcade Ari. Okay, so I guess it was the Arcade skins. So cool, so cute, so cute. Oh, Academy Ari with red glasses. Well, look at you, look at that. Yes, oh, I like her. <laughs> I like how her ears are so big in that one. Ari Nine Tail Fox, yes, by Lucid Sky. Yes, yes, queen. Oh my God, summon your imagination. So is this the, 
Wait, which one is this? Oh, is this the one that were like pop stars or something? I need to get that. I like her hat. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! She's so pretty! Snow Fox. Okay. Awesome. I like the flower in her hair. She looks Ukrainian in this. Looks like a, this looks like a very Ukrainian picture. Um, oh, cool. Nice. Corp, cor, cor, coronation, coronation. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. How did people draw this? Hello. That is so cool. Oh, I'm gonna have to get a print of this. Oh, who is this by? This is Chuba, <laughs> Chili Baka. Oh my god, that is so cool! This would be like a huge- oh man! Yes, queen! Oh! Star Guardian! Star Guardian! Yes, queen! Look at that, I like the purples. Love that. This is Girls' Generation! Yes, queen! Oh, 2016 calendar is here. There's a lot of jinx. Final showdown. It's like, I'm gonna destroy you. We might be friends in one fan art, and the next one, we're gonna kill each other. She's a mage, 2011. Ari, the nine-tailed fox. Look how cool she looks. Ari was initially based on the Korean mythological character, Kuimo, a nine-tailed fox who can transform into a beautiful woman and seduce men in order to kill them. Fantastic, that's my girl. Some of League's most beloved champions were inspired by cultural mythologies. That is so cool. And for good reason. Myths are often shaped from thousands of years of storytelling, tradition, and themes that reach deep into human fears and fantasy. Champions like Ari allow us to pay homage to the great character archetypes that have come before, and they challenge us to twist those archetypes into something unique to League. Love that. So again, League with their lore. The lore of League. This is what League of Legends is all about. It's taking inspiration from mythology and putting it into their own characters, which then allows us to do even more research within the League of Legends fandom and just overall learn about mythology while playing the game. So I love that. See, I didn't know that. Pikachu, I don't know what you're doing. Pikachu is attacking me. I didn't know that. I didn't think that she was literally going to be based on a, on a mythological character who's a nine-tailed fox who seduces men to kill them. That's my girl. Look at you. Look at you, girl. Let's look at the screenshots again. Look how cute. See, she looks so much different compared to, like, look how cute and bean she looks. She's such a bean in this. Yes, queen. I love that part. Yes. So this is behind cinematic behind the scenes. A new dawn, BTS. Check out the behind the scenes video below for a look at how we taped into character design, music, animation, and even classic and even classic Foley techniques to showcase some of your favorite champions slugging it out for blood, guts, and glory. All right, so let's react to this about BTS. No, it is not the Korean pop boy band. It is literally behind the scenes. But hey, same BTS. I love BTS. Might as well react to some of it. So let's get reacting. See how it goes from that to Oh my god! Yo! Yo! Is this what you gotta do with animation? Yo! Oh my god! This is so cool! The goal of this particular piece was we wanted to dive into the League of Legends universe with a bigger, more diverse cast. Mm -hmm. I think it's just about fleshing things out. Like, who are these characters? What, what is the world really like that they live in? So when you play the game, you get a very small piece of, of a much broader story that we want to tell. You go. Ooh, yes. <laughs> a cinematic of this depth leads to champion discovery. It forces us to go deeper into understanding the characters yeah. that we're trying to portray. For one, you know, th there, there's significantly more detail <gasps> yes. in the art and the textures and the models that we're putting forth. When we're up close and personal on someone's face, like how are, how are they gonna react to a situation? <laughs> we have to really understand their personality. <laughs> we had to kind of find a balance and, and look for good moments where we could say something about a character yeah. in the middle of what they were doing. 
Yeah, see what he said there what is very, very important because it's like, again, there was no dialogue at all to this. So it's very important that you capture what the character is all about by just movement, by gesture. So I love how he did say that. Favorite moments is when Draven steps in on <laughs> Leona's sword, kneels down, and he's just like, sucks to be you. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have to sucks say to it. You. He just has that look on his face. <laughs> The See, big they meme so much that Brad characters. was reinforcing. Oh my God! Was, Graves is not impressed. <laughs> nothing, seen it on nothing before. impresses Graves. <laughs> He's seen it all, and Fact. he tried to reflect that in the acting choices that he makes throughout. <laughs> and then when you do see him get a little bit scared, and you do see him get bested by Nautilus when he barely gets his gun up in time and it's sort of shattered by oh, the anchor, that was seeing a little much. bit of fear in Graves oh. is also a kind of a cool moment. <sighs> Every character has to feel different, has to move different. In this League of Legends, love if, Bright Games, if somebody love swings character. an axe a certain way, Brad always describes this, if they swing an axe a certain way, no other character in the history yeah. of League can swing in that same way. Exactly. Because they, they all have their sort of animation identity. Then on the form side, it's their silhouette. You know, their mm. proportions, their <gasps> size. Every single Look one at of that. Oh All those little ingredients equal the sum Liner of always making gets someone like a unique individual. For Darius, you know, we went with the strong jaw, the size of his eyes, the, the way his lips are, and even the, the wideness of his nose gives him that hulking yeah. sort of alpha look. The alpha look. I love this part. Ari, we wanted to sell that fox-like structure to her, and so there are these very minor things done with her face and the way her eyes are spaced and her nose and her lips. Wow. Of course, there's the ears and the tail, but even in her movement in the piece, we actually went with a very slick, sleek, sort of evasive oh movement style god. for her to bring out this fox side. Oh my god, guys! What the heck? You guys love these guys! Oh my god! <laughs> That's so true. I just realized that too. It's very, it was very bouncy. One of the great challenges we had uh, with the sound for the cinematic was creating something that a player could close their eyes watching the cinematic and then instantly know that that's the character that they know and love from the game. Oh, good from a point. sound perspective, it always starts with Foley. Oh, Foley I love is this. Foley basically recording all of the stuff that it's uh, the sounds that a sound human can actually reproduce. So it's doing a lot of armor, leather, cloth so movement, cool. footsteps. Foley is very important for so storytelling because it's animation, so there's no production track yeah. to start with. So every movement of each one of these characters has to be custom hand wow. designed. Oh my lord! Was, oh my god! Was really just because we had taken up the kind of big badass armor space yeah. with, with Darius. And so for Leona, we actually went and we looked for different kind of really and high pitched fight. elements oh, each that step, almost had each a, step. a sunshine kind of feel to them. So cool. Wow. Alright, you guys here just Each and every. Oh my lord. <laughs> Oh my god! It's so Musically, inspiring. I definitely wanted it to feel different. Every character needs kind of their own element and their own character musically. And that takes time to find, you know, um, because there's only so many instruments in the world. True. Nautilus was really difficult because um, what does a huge dude that's a running submarine sound like? <laughs> running right? submarine? When you think about it, it's a pretty straightforward approach. All right, he comes from underwater. Let's go underwater. What? Are you si Oh my god. What studio is this in? Lord. Chills! 
I think we want players to come away with this feeling a, a stronger connection to the mm -hmm. characters that they play. Oh, look, as. bless you! I play Jax a lot, and seeing him in cinematic form gives you a lot more of, a, of a, an agree. attachment to the character. Yep. You know, I can say, like, that's Jax. Oh. And I can go, because I, I play Darius a lot, I can go, yeah, and I owned you by. <laughs> see, see, this is the thing. The creators are the they're fans, too. They're fans first of their own game. Like, oh, that was so. Oh my god! <laughs> That's so true though. It's like when you see your favorite character being animated, you're like, oh my god, it's them. And you you have this stronger connection when you do play as them. And like after watching a cinematic short and then you go back into it, it's like a totally different feel. Oh my god. By grabbing you and tossing you, <laughs> it's it's those conversations that can happen. It really is like something made out of passion and love. So yeah. our players, when they see it, they will enjoy it just as much as we enjoy making it. Oh Let's make oh. more cool stuff for our players so that we can see it too. See, God bless them. So much hard work and dedication. Wow. See, animation, all right? Animation takes so long to do. And it's not just like, hey, there's like a character here and there and then suddenly, boom, it's magic. It's like, no, little tiny pieces could be the hard, like a blade of grass could possibly be the hardest thing somebody animates. You never know. And then people, when they go into it and then the, the whole product is released and then people start hating on it. Yeah, everyone has their own opinions, but at the same time, appreciate the hard work that went into it. Cause this, I agree with that 100%. Like, when I, like now that I'm playing as, and like connecting with Ari as one of my mains, to say that, um, see her in cinematic form, you have more of a stronger connection. You have much more of a stronger connection, but oh man, I love that. That was, oh, that was so cool. All right, so I think it's about time that we start reading aloud Ari's biography and some of her short stories. So let us begin, my friends. All right, so read Ari's biography. Very excited for this because again, I'm maining as her now. So wow, all right, here is her biography. <clears throat> Reading time. Get your snacks. Innately connected to the latent power of Runeterra, Ari is a Vastaya who can reshape magic into orbs of raw energy. That's so cool. So any magic that's around the air, she could just form these orbs. Very interesting. Travels in toying with her prey by manipulating their emotions before devouring their life essence. That's my main for you. That's Ari. Despite her predatory nature, Ari retains a sense of empathy as she receives flashes of memory from each soul she consumes. Are you serious? Oh my God. You know how much pain she must be going through? It's like she may revel in it. She may relish in this moment that I'm gonna steal their souls and emotions from them. But then suddenly, she has these remnants left behind and thinking, wow, huh, I have this remorse now because I, I see their memories. Oh my lord! Abandoned in the snowy woods of northern Ionia. Wait, why she was abandoned? Is my girl Ari? Is she, a, is she an orphan? What? No, 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 she was an orphan! Don't do this to me! No! Ari knew nothing of her original family Save the token they left her. Oh my god. They left her a token, but then did they die or was she a. But they, she was abandoned. Oh my god. A pair of matching gemstones. She joined a pack of ice foxes as they stalked prey on their morning hunt. And before long, they adopted her as one of their own. Well, that's sweet. See, animals know. The thing is, too, is like what animals. I've seen a lot of stories where animals. Oh god, what am I. I'm trying to get comfortable here. Oh my god, Pikachu. Behave. I see that I've seen a lot of stories and read a lot of stories where animals actually adopt not only just with humans but other forms and species of animals when they know they are in danger or they can connect to them. So I love that. Oh, that is so oh, that's sweet. With no one to teach her the magic of her kind, Ari instructively learned to draw it from the world around her, shaping destructive spheres and quickening her reflexes to take down prey. Alright, so she learned by herself. I mean, what I always tell people too is there's always different forms of education. Sometimes it's just hands-on. You just gotta learn these things for yourself. If she was close enough, she could even soothe the deer into a state of tranquility, so much that it remained serene, 
even as she sank her teeth into its flesh. Ari, dang, girl. Dang! So it's like, hey, it's gonna be fine, Mr. Deer. And the deer's all like, ah, oh, yes, I'm at a spa right now. And then she's like, <coughs> true story. <laughs> Ari first encountered humans when a troop of foreign soldiers camped near her den. Their behaviors were strange to Ari, and curious to learn more, she watched them from afar. She was especially drawn to a hunter who, unlike his wasteful companions, used every part of the animals he killed, reminding her of her fox family. So that's, that's good, because it's like, you know, some people just throw things away. Instead of thanking the animals and saying, thank you for this food that we've just consumed, and, you know, just not throwing them away, he actually, he cared to do that. Okay, so that's why she was intrigued by him. When the hunter was wounded by an arrow, Ari felt his life seeping away so that must suck too if you have the ability to feel someone dying like you feel it like when in reality when someone is sick and dying you kind of do feel it but with ari she has this ability to know and it's like oh my god she instinctively devoured the essence leaving his body and gained brief flashes of his memories the lover he had lost in battle that's sad his children from a strange land of iron and stone she found she could push his emotions from fear to sorrow and joy and charmed him with visions of a sun-soaked meadow as he died. My god! Riot Games! What are you doing to me? <laughs> oh my god! Euphoric as the rush of absorbing the hunter's life, Ari felt more alive than ever and traveled Ionia in search for more victims. Wow. Everyone's like, I'm just gonna suck out your soul. <laughs> she relished toying with her prey, shifting their emotions before consuming their life essence. Dang, girl. She alternated between days dazzling them with visions of beauty, hallucinations, and deep longing, and occasionally dreams colored by raw sorrow. So it just depends who the victim is. If she likes the person, maybe you'll get happy memories. If you don't like, if she don't like the person, then you're gonna get some uh, New Jersey flashes. Nobody wants that. She grew drunk with memories that were not of her own and exhilarated the lives of others. So that must be like. Like, in your mind, let's say you have your own memories, but then you have other memories toppled over by that, you're gonna start, like, forgetting who you are. So hopefully it doesn't happen. Through stolen visions, Ari watched through their eyes as they pledged, felt like to a temple of shadow, sacrificed offerings to a deity of a sun incarnate, encountered an avian tribe of Vastia that spoke only in song and glimpsed mountainous landscapes unlike she had seen before. She experienced heartbreak and elation of tantalizing flashes as they left her craving more and wept at the massacres of Ionian villagers at the hands of Noxian invaders. So I like how it's also hinting at what she saw, like the travels of other people, but also how at this moment, it's like she's craving more. She wants to have these feelings overwhelm her because once you, it's kind of like what they said, she grew drunk with it. So this has become more of an addiction for her. Girl! Hugs, not drugs! God, Ari! Ari was surprised when the memories led her to discover the tale of an unearthly fox demon. As she absorbed more life essence, she grew to identify more and more with her victims and felt guilty at ending so many lives. At least, you know, remorse, guilt plays a long part in redemption. She feared that the myths about her were true. She was no more a cruel monster, but whenever too much time passed between feedings, she sensed her own power fade and could not help but partake once more. So like, she feels this guilt, all right? And you feel guilty, but at the same time, when you start feeling your own powers fade for your own protection, for your own sake and survival, you're gonna have to continue doing this. So it's like, she's like in a catch-22 here, you know? It's like she could either stop completely and possibly lose all of her powers and be weak and defenseless, or not stop and live with the guilt. So there, hopefully there is like some kind of happy medium here. Ari tested her self-control by consuming small quantities of life essence, enough to absorb a memory or two, but not enough to kill. 
She was successful for a time, but was tortured by her unending hunger and soon succumbed to temptation, indulging in the dreams of an entire coastal village. So, okay, you gotta do it in moderation. You know, she's addicted right now. She's going through stuff. You don't just stop and go through withdrawals. She's literally, you gotta do it in moderation, girl. You don't just stop, you know, you don't just stop completely. You gotta do little by little. Oh my God, Ari. Tormented by her mistake, and by the way, by the way, why are all these champions suffering? Riot Games, what are you doing to your champions? Why do they all have to suffer? Oh my god. Tormented by her mistake, Ari could not forgive herself and felt a deep sorrow that forced her to question her own existence. Oh my lord. She withdrew to a forest caves, isolating herself in hopes by controlling her relentless desire. Years later, she emerged, determined to experience every facet of life through her own eyes. Okay, good. She got some rehab. Good. Though she might not indulge in occasional essence. Oh, though she might indulge in occasional essence, she resisted consuming entire lives. Okay, good. So she just takes a little nibble here and there, like, and, you know, a little moderation. You know, she, she won't be fat with it. She, a little moderation. She's a little, little diet here. Within the twin gen stones, as they only clue her to her origin, Ari set out search for others like her. No more would she rely on barred memories and unfamiliar dreams. Good for you, my queen. I like how it kind of shows that she was addicted. She went through these, that was her flaw. She went through these, these addictions, but she was able to overcome it. But slowly, you know, she's still tormented by it, still pains her, but I did not think this was gonna be her story. And I'm glad that now that I'm Ari as being one of my mains, I feel even more connected to her because we all get hungry sometimes. Like with me, it's hunger for success. With me, it's hunger to be competitive, but you gotta do it in moderation. You can't just over overindulge like she did you got it like even if you're out there and you're like addicted to alcohol or drugs please just know that you there will be a time that you can get help and hopefully reading Ari's story will like encourage you to go out there and get help so I like how Riot Games also adds that behind the lore of their stories where it's kind of saying to us that hey you might be going through something hey you might be addicted to something just like Ari was but there will be a common time where you notice that there that is wrong what you were doing and that you there will always be help like Ari she kind of had to do it all on her own and you gotta be proud of her she she literally had to do all of this by herself Round of applause, Manuel. Round of applause. All right, so moving on to Ari's story. Let's read Ari's story. Now look at her. Oh my God, you're so pretty. A fair trade. Also, I like her, how her nails are like that. I really, it's like literally gonna be like, I'm gonna kill you. All right, so a fair trade. And this is by <clears throat> Rayla Hyde. And hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. If not, uh, people can't even say my whole name. So <laughs> a fair trade. Oh man, here we go, go into story time mode. All right, let's go, role play time. The market smelled of burning essence and rotting cabbage. I could sense that, you smell that right now. Ari wrapped her cloak around her nine tails and fiddled with her twin sunstone tokens to distract herself from the stench, rolling them between her fingers and snapping them together. Each one had the shape of a blazing flame but they were carved in such a way that their sharper edges fit together, forming a perfectly smooth orb. I could see this. This writing is perfection. She carried the golden stone since before she could remember, though she had no knowledge of their origin. Man, that must suck. I mean, literally, you could you hold on to this, but you're kind of also saying, where am I from? Where did you guys come from? Though Ari was in a new environment, she was comforted by the latent magic buzzing all around her. She passed the stand with dozens of woven baskets filled to the brim with polished rocks, shells etched with legends of the seafaring tribe, gambling dice carved from bones, that is so cool, and other curious items. Nothing matched the style of Ari's sculpted tokens. Care for a gem to match the blue of the skies? asked the gray-bearded merchant. For you, I'll trade a cerulean barbu for the coast of a single gravian feather, or perhaps the seed of a jubilee tree. I'm flexible. Ari smiled at him, but shook her head and continued through the market, sunstones in hand. She passed a stand of, of covered in spiky orange vegetables, a child selling fruit that shifted color with the weather. Oh, that's so cool! I want one! and at least three peddlers swinging tins of incense, which of whom claimed to have discovered the deepest form of meditation. 
fortunes! Come get your fortunes told, called a young woman with lavender eyes and a soft jawline. Find out who you'll fall in love with, or how they avoid unlucky situations with a pinch of burdock root. Or if you prefer your future left to the gods, I'll answer a question about your past. Though I do recommend finding out whether or not you're at risk of death by poisoning. Oh my god. A tall Vastia with feline ears was just about to take a bite of his spiced pastry. He froze and stared at the fortune teller in alarm. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, what's about? Is, is it any of the champions? Or Okay. The answer is no, by the way. Yours is for free, she said, curtsying to him before the turning to Ari. Now you look like you've a dark and mysterious past, or at least some tales worth sharing. Any burning questions for me, lady? Beneath heavy layers of incense, Ari paused at the scent of wet fur and spiced leather lingering at the woman's neck. Thank you, but no, she replied. I'm still looking around. You won't find any more your mellow tokens in this market, I'm afraid, the woman said, nodding at Ari's sunstones, like the ones you have. The back of Ari's neck prickled, and she drew closer to the woman. She would not let her excitement get the better of her. Do you recognize these? Where do they come from? The woman eyed Ari. I think they're your mellows anyway, she said. Never seen a pair in person. He only carved a small number in his time, and many of the sets were separated in the war. Dead rare, those. Ari leaned closer with each word. I'm hearing, by the way, the woman said. Do you know where I might find this craftsman? Ari asked. Hiran laughed. <laughs> no idea, but if you come in, I'll tell you what I know. Oh my god! What are we gonna find out? Ari wrapped her cloak around her shoulders and eagerly followed the fortune teller past her booth and into a caravan decorated wall to wall with animal skins. I see this. Tea, Hiran said. I brewed it this morning. She poured two cups of liquid the color of plum wine, taking one for herself. The tea tasted of bitter oak bark, masked by a cloying dollop of honey. Kieran held out a hand for the stones, but Ari kept them close. Oh, oh. I'm getting a sense that they are special to you, the woman said with a wry smile. Don't worry, I have no interest in peddling so stolen sunstones. Bad for a girl's reputation. Can you tell me where they're from? Asked Ari, handing them over gingerly. So it's like, it's not like just like boom, it's more like. Kieran held them up to the light. These are beautiful, she said. I don't know how they fit together so perfectly. I've not seen like the like. Ari said nothing. She stood frozen with curiosity and did not take her eyes off the woman. Legend says the sculpture known as Yamelo collected fossilized lizard eggs from a thousand thousand years ago that he carved to intricate shapes. These ancient lizards lived long before the Guada Sea dried up into a desert, leaving only petrified bones and dust. Hiran coughed as Ari detected a bitter note upon her breath, as if she had been drinking vinegar. Uh-oh, so she's coughing right now. Oh, no. Yamelo's stones are designed as small pieces that fit into larger sculpture, she continued. The woman dangled the golden pieces in front of Ari's face. Just as your past have left you with information to be desired, these stones may have many more parts that, when combined, create another shape altogether. Who knows what you'll be able to track down for your history. With the missing pieces, you may learn more than you'd like. Those are pretty words, Ari murmured, staring at the woman. After a moment of silence, Heron chuckled. <laughs> Some threads of truth, threads of my own invention. A fortune teller's weaving must be seamless. The woman retrieved a hunter's knife from the cabinet. I weave in just enough of what you desire to make you stay, 
she said, till the tea slows your muscles, that is. A low growl escaped to Ari's lips. She would tear this woman apart. She tried to pounce, but her limbs did not obey. She was rooted in place. Oh, there's no need for that, lady. I only need a single tail. This is, this is so good, I see this. Useful for the variety of potions, you see, and extremely valuable, or so I think. Never seen a Vastio with foxtails before. The tea freezes any pain, along with your mobility. Hiran wrapped a bandage around one of Ari's tails. Ari tried to resist, but she still could not move. You'll wake up tomorrow, good as new, said the woman. Well, with one last tail, do you really need all nine? Ari shut her eyes and reached out for the reservoirs of magic around her. The environment had plenty ripe for the taking, but she was too weakened by the tea to draw them to her. Instead, she reached into Hiran's mind, ooh, which was far more malleable, and pushed. Ari opened her eyes and, could, and stared hard into Hiran's. They deepened from lavender to violet. Oh my god! Hiran, she said, come closer. I would look into the face of the one who tricked me. Of course, lady, Hiran replied, transfixed. The woman's voice sounded hollow, as though it came from the bottom of a well. She leaned into her face, was, and her face was only inches away. Ari inhaled, drawing essence of the woman's life into her, from her breath. Oh, Hiran was a young girl hiding, hungry and afraid, beneath a market stall. Two men argued above, looking for her. She had nothing but empty coffers to show for her day's work. Ari continued to drain Huron's life, sampling memories of raw emotion. Oh my god. They felt rich in Ari's mouth, and she relished each unique flavor of emotion. Huron told the fortune of, witch, of a witch doctor shrouded in veils, receiving a copper for her troubles. She used, she used the coin to buy a piece of bread, which she devoured in seconds. A man with eyebrows resembling butterfly wings, okay, cool, gambled a golden yamello stone where Hiran watched from the shadows. Hiran tracked Ari as she walked through the market. One of her foxtails peeked from beneath her cloak. She drew the Vastia into her caravan. Enough. Ari stopped, her head spinning with renewed vigor. Each memory she stole from Hiran, she felt energy rush back into her weakened muscles, cleansing them to the, of the poisons. Strengthened once more, she slowly, sh she slowly shook her limbs awake and flexed her tails with a, s with, with a shiver. They tingled with pinpricks. Hiran stood wide-eyed and dazed, still very much alive. It was as she could wake tomorrow, good as new, less a few memories that she would not miss. So basically, Ari took the memories so she would not even remember it, so maybe she'll live a better life. Oh my god, Ari. With knowledge of the woman's life, Ari's rage had faded. She brushed her hand against the fortune teller's cheek, then wrapped her cloak tightly around her shoulders and stepped out into the sunlit market. Hiron would not remember her or their encounter, but Ari had left the trade with a name to hunt, Yamelo. And the image of the man with soft winged eyebrows was buried in her mind. Oh my lord, this writing! Okay, so what I loved about this, my friends, is how she did not kill her. Despite the fact that this Hiran literally almost destroyed her, okay? Legit almost killed my baby's laugh. She did not take revenge. Because she learned of her past. And that is a very powerful thing to do. That took a lot of courage, but also took a lot of strength there. She didn't want revenge. She just was, she learned about this woman's past and was like, okay, I understand now. I understand why she is like this. She's desperate too. Just like all the people out there, everyone has a story. And once you learn about those stories, you will learn why people act the way they do. So good on you. Good on you, Ari. Oh my God. So Rayla Hyde, 
I, I hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. You are a wonderful, terrific writer. I literally felt that and I saw that. I saw all of it. The power of writing is how you were able to see things. It's like you don't want to just tell your readers. You want to show, as I like to say here on the channel, it's all about the telling. It's all about the showing. So when you showcase certain things, it works even better. But I love this. Absolutely adore this. So let's move on to Garden of Forgetting. And again, it's by Rayla He too. A gust of wind blew cold night air from the garden, carrying with an enticing sense of overripe fruit and blooming flowers. Ooh, I see and smell that. <laughs> Ari stood before the garden's entrance, where stone transitioned to soil and narrow labyrinth caves into a deep caldera. Thickets of trees and brambles grew wild beneath the moonlight. Oh my god, I see this stuff with oh, this writing! Oh my god! While flowers bloomed in lush abundance. Ari hesitated, knowing well the twin nature of danger and beauty. Oh my god. She had heard legends of the sacred grove since childhood, but had never before trans traversed the southern caverns to find it. According to the stories, those who stepped over the threshold of the garden began as one person and left as someone else entirely, or did not leave at all. Oh, that's so powerful. Again, you can't, you can't always trust stories, though. It could be just people don't want you in there. Man. I get nervous now. <laughs> Whatever the truth might be, Ari had made up her mind. As she stepped into the garden, the back of her neck prickled as if someone were watching her. <gasps> No figure was visible amongst the trees, but the garden was far from still. Everywhere Ari looked, new flowers bloomed with each passing second. Ari walked a winding path through the tangle of plants, stepping over roots rumbling beneath the, sto the soil. She ducked under hanging vines that reached out to her as if clamoring for affection. Oh my God, this writing, Oh, Oh my God, guys. She could have sworn she heard a hush from the soft rush, rustling of leaves. Ooh. Moonbeams shone from the canopy above, revealing trees bearing leaves of silver and gold. Flower stalks entwined around their trunks, curling to display dazzling buds brighter than any gemstone. Plump spit sp spice cherries, spice cherries. I'm like spooch about <laughs> plump spice cherries, coated in a layer of frost, chimed softly as they swayed amid the untamed thicket. Ooh, I want some spice cherries now. A snow lily stretched toward Ari's face and caressed her cheek gently. Oh, it was too alluring to resist. Ari pressed her face into its petals to inhale the heady scent. Her nose chilled and she took in a faint smell of oranges, the summer breeze, and the taint and the tang of a fresh kill. Ooh, someone died there. The blossom trembled as it blushed with color and Ari's breath caught it in her throat. She swayed, dizzy at the flower's perfume. Ooh, dang, snip. The snow lily fell to the soil, severed at its stem. A liquid seeped from the cut. Ari let out a breath, her nine tails twitching as her head cleared. Oh Lord, what the flower do? Oh no, oh no, there's somebody there! There's somebody there, oh God! Ari startled as a woman with wisps of gray white hair stood before her, shears in hand. She was wrapped in a colorful shawls and her eyelashes sparkled with dew. As the woman turned her sea green gaze to Ari, Ari felt a strange unease as if this woman could slice through her gut just as easily as a fibrocious stalk. Oh God. The woman's face wrinkled like a tree bark was impossible to read, but Ari was no longer concerned for her own safety. You startled me. Agalia. In the stories, the old woman was known as the eater of secrets. Ooh, the forgotten or the witch gardener. Oh my God. Wanting to show respect to one with such power, Ari decided to call her Agalia, great grandmother. Oh my God. Oh my God, this lore. <gasps> 
Oh my god. Okay, okay. Old woman voice time. <clears throat> the flowers want something from us, she said. Just as we seek something from them, it would be wise to keep your nose to yourself. I would know. I have to feed these hungry babies myself. Oh. So you are the gardener, Ari said. One of my kinder names, yes, but quite beside the point. I know why you're here, Imhanya. Little one. Oh. Ari felt uncomfortable at the word, often used as a familiar relationship, though she was not sure why. Oh my god! Oh my god! You seek absolution, freedom from your pain, said the gardener. She stepped over the shrieking fern and beckoned to Ari. Come. Ooh. As they walked through the moonlit garden, flowers turned to face the old woman, as if she were the sun itself, warming their leaves and helping them grow. Or perhaps the flowers did not wish to turn their backs to her. The old woman waved Ari to the bench in front of the, the gnarled cloud fruit tree, nice, and sat opposite of her. Let me guess, you were in love. The gardener said, a smile crinkling the corners of her lips. Ari's brows fur furrowed. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry, you're far from the first, said the old woman. So, who was he? A soldier? An adventurer? A warrior in exile? An artist, said Ari. <sighs> My girl's in love with somebody. This is canon! Who is the fucking ship? She had not uttered the syllables of his name in over a year and could not help to bring herself to say them now. They were like swallowing broken glass. Oh my God. He painted flowers. Ah, a romantic, the gardener said. I killed him. Ari spat. Is that romantic enough for you? Ugh! Oh, it's like a like a Greek tragic love story right here. I need to know more about this man. Oh my god. As she spoke the truth aloud, Ari could not disguise the sharp bitterness on her tongue. Oh my god. This, this, this is getting interesting. I sucked the life from his lips as he lay dying in my arms. Oh my god, she said. He was kinder more selfless than anyone had the right to be. I thought I could suppress my urges, but the taste of his dreams and memories was too enticing. He urged me on. I did not resist, and now, now I cannot go on knowing what I did. Please, Akelia, can you give me the gift of oblivion? Can you make me forget? Oh my God! Oh, oh! The gardener did not answer. She stood and picked a ripe cloud fruit from the tree and peeled it slowly, carefully, so the rind remained in one piece. Oh, my God. This... Yeah. The flesh fell into the six vermilion segments, which she offered to Ari. Care for a slice? Ari stared at her. Don't worry. This one doesn't want anything from you. Not like the flowers. Fruit never does. Fruit is the most generous part of a plant. It strives to be luscious and juicy and tempting. It simply wants to attract. The food turns to ash in my mouth, said Ari. How can I feed myself when I am no more than a monster? Oh, oh God, this is so sad. Even monsters need to eat, you know, the gardener said, smiling gently. She placed one of the cloud fruit segments into her mouth and chewed before making a face. Tart! In all my years in the garden, I've never gotten used to the tang. Oh, she's so cute! The old woman ate the remaining pieces while Ari sat in silence. When she was finished, she wiped the juice from her mouth. So you stole a life that was not yours to take, said the gardener. Now you suffer the consequences. I cannot stand it, Ari said. Oh. To be alive is to be in pain, I'm afraid, the gardener said. A vine dripping with snow lily buds wound its way around the old woman's arm. The woman did not flinch. 
I can't go on knowing that I killed him, Ari pleaded. The, there are greater consequences to losing yourself, Verminia. The gardener reached for Ari's hand and squeezed it. Oh, I see this. Her sea green eyes glinted in the moonlight and Ari detected something she had not seen before. Longing, perhaps. You will be broken, said the old woman. You will never again be one. I'm already in fragments, Ari replied. And every second that passes, I split myself anew. Please, Akalia, I must do this. The old woman sighed. This garden will not refuse a gift freely given, for it always hungers. With that, the gardener offered her arm to Ari, still entwined with a vine of snow lilies, buds unfurled in outstretched hands. Give your breath to this flower, as you think on the memories you wish to rid of, the old woman said, gesturing to the bell-shaped lily. The flower will consume them. Do not inhale again until you feel nothing. Ari held the flower gently between her fingers. The gardener nodded. Ari took a deep breath and exhaled into the flower. Ari stood next to a raven-haired man at the edge of the lake. Together they leapt into the, we the water and screamed as they frolicked over endless waves. <laughs> Ari suffered dissol Ari's suffering dissolved like a cloud along with the image in her mind. In a forest silenced by winter, Ari watched a raven-haired man painting a single blossom. Am I not, am I not your flower? She asked, pulling a strap down from her dress. Oh, 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 we're going there. He lifted his brush and smeared paint over her bare back. Oh, the bristles tingled as he recreated the flower atop her spine. You are, you are, he repeated, kissing her shoulder with each word. We're going there, friends. We're going there. Disclaimer. Ari knew she, she should dread what would happen next, but her heart was growing cold and numb. She stood at the center of a lake, holding the lifeless body of a man she once loved. He dipped beneath the water, becoming contoured through the glassy Refraction. Oh my god, stop! This is killing me! Once this vision would have caused stabbing, stabbing pain, but Ari felt no more than a dull ache. Ari leaned over a fallen woodcutter in a stone cavern, consuming his life. At the sound of boots crunching on snow, she startled. The raven-haired man stood, watching. Ari despaired. She, would, she had not wanted him to see this. I can't be good enough for you. Ari said, look at me, I'm greedy for a soul of a dying man, please leave me, I'm not good, I cannot be good. Her raven-haired love responded, I don't care. This was the first time Ari remembered someone loving her wholly, in spite of her nature. His voice was warm and deep with emotion, I am yours. <laughs> The memory caught in Ari's throat. She had stopped breathing, breaking the flower spell. No, she thought. I can't lose this. Ari tried to inhale, but the air felt like a noose around her neck. It choked her and stifled her throat, as if she were breathing poison. Her vision blackened, but she gasped until her lungs were nearly bursting. Losing this would kill him all over again. Oh! No! Oh! Ari's knees gave out, and she collapsed on the ground, still gripping the snow lily. The unnatural perfume she inhaled from the flower pirouetted through her mind, conjuring strange and disturbing visions. Oh my god. Ari hallucinated. In a snow-silenced forest, she envisioned, envisioned each of her nine tails ripped from her spine, only to grow back so that she could be torn off again. Oh my god, this is so dark! In a stone cavern, she saw dozens of portraits of herself painted in inky black brush strokes. In each of the images, her faces was blank and cold. She floated weightless at the center of a lake and looked down to see the lake was filled with not water, but blood. Oh my God, where are you? In her mind's eyes, she saw the face, a face wrapped, warped by endless folds of her memory, ones she was already forgetting. The face was blurred, like a painting of a man rather than the man himself. 
He looked at her, stared into her, but she could not meet his gaze. Ari opened her eyes. The gardener was standing above her, holding the vine of snow lilies, which had turned raven black. Can you still see him? asked the old woman. Ari focused on the hazy shapes in her mind and focused until they materialized into his face. His face. Yes, it's cloudy, but I remember, said Ari. She fixed the image of, her, of, of his face into her mind, memorizing every detail. She would not let it dissolve. Yeah. The old woman's eyes flashed, not with longing, but regret. Then you did not... Then you did what many had not the strength to do. You did not succumb to peace, said the gardener. I couldn't, said Ari, choking over her words. I couldn't give him up. Even if I am a monster, even if each day I fall apart and each day I must bear the pain of a hundred times over, oblivion is worse, much worse. Oblivion was a, th was a thousand blurry faces staring at her into em with empty eyes. You cannot take back what you gave, Amelia, the, gardenia, the gardener said. The flowers do not relinquish what, you was, what was freely given, but you may keep what remains. Go, go, leave this place before it takes hold, she whispered. Vines coiled around the gardener's shoulders, revealing lilies of deep sea green, as it's done to so many others. Oh... Ari tried to stand, but the vine of snow lilies had wound its way around her tails. She tr struggled against the tightening clutches, prying barbs from her fur, then scrambled to her feet and ran. Knotted roots broke loose from the soil, trying to ensnale her as she leapt between them. A tangled curtain of thorned moon roses swerved to block Ari's path, but she held her breath and dove beneath the flowers, which caught wisps of her hair as she tumbled. The path from the garden was overgrown with snow lilies of all colors. Their leaves sharp as knives slashed Ari's skin, ugh, with thick stalks coiled around her face and neck binding her mouth. Ari bit down and ripped through the fibers of her teeth, tasting sour blood. Oh my god! She tore through the archway of the stone caverns beyond. She could just, she could just make out the gardener's voice. A piece of you lingers here, always. The old woman called. Unlike us, the garden does not forget. Ari did not turn back. Oh, God! That was so good! Oh, my God! Okay, so let's discuss. Let's go back to Ari's page. My girl was in love with somebody, and he was an artist. This is canon. Oh, I hope this is canon. Oh, my Lord. Oh my god, guys! Ari! Queen! She loves somebody and then she was gonna forget it like that. Meh. Oh man. But it still took part of her. I, I saw the old woman. Like in my mind, I saw her being like holding back by the vines that's being taken away. Oh, the, the god and does not forget. Oh my god, this writing! Oh my god, but man. I'm scared. Man. I'm so, I feel so bad for her. She loved him so much. <sighs> she killed, like, imagine killing someone you loved. Oh my god. Ari, you didn't have to do that, but still, they have to live with that. All the league, all these champions, so dark. Does anybody have a happy past? Does anyone have anything happy about them? So far, Aatrox had a very dark, dark past and dark story, and Ari has a dark past and a dark story. Oh my god. But these writers. Wow. There's another one. All right, so we, we read Fair Trade, we read Garden of Forgetting, and now we have to just read, it's the Field Journal. Okay, so let's read the Field Journal. So Ed, Edward, Edward Centiligo's Vastia Field Journal. Okay, it's the Field, oh! Oh, okay. Oh my god. Okay, so I think this should be in its own separate video. Um, I think I will probably make this video next about the uh, Vastias because we already covered Ionia. Um, so this is more about, not necessarily about um, Ari, but this is about all the Vastians. Oh, that is so cool. I'll make that as another video for you guys.
This was Ari's League of Legends Champion Tales. This was her episode. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I love being able to read things aloud, but also I love, also, while I'm reading things aloud, I go in blind. So at the same time, while reading them aloud, I'm also reacting to it. So, wow. Wow, we learned so much about our girl Ari. She, um, has been through a lot. She lost somebody that she did love, which is very hard and very painful. And she, it's just upsetting because, like, I did not know anything about her. I mean, even when I've gone to main as her, one of my mains, like, I didn't know anything about this. So when I go in back into play as Ari into, into the Rift and everything, it's gonna be a totally different experience because I'll probably even talk more about her past and know more about her, but wow. Oh my God, this was a good one. This was good and this was a very long episode. I hope you guys did appreciate it. Again, I wanna start, I'm gonna making these really long episodes for each and every single one of the champs. So be sure to support us on Patreon if you would like to see more because uh, more episodes per week as well. So if we're fully funded on Patreon, I can keep doing this even more per week. Once per week works out well for me, but to get more episodes to get to your favorite champs, um, I can do four to six per week if we are fully funded. But wow, I love this. This was, this was fantastic. She has been through a lot, but you know, she's not a monster. She considers herself a monster. Monsters are the people who don't feel remorse. She felt remorse. You saw how she was feeling. She didn't want to forget him, but she also wanted to forget the pain of what she did. So that was remorse right there because she felt guilty. I mean, what did you? That's dark, Ari, girl. Fall, this is her story, falls in love, can't resist his kindness, kills him, feels bad about it. Why don't you tell me how you really feel? <laughs> but overall, I did love learning more about our our girl, the Nine Tails Fox, Ari. I love the mythology behind her character. And also, be sure to share this episode far and wide to get those Ari fans here so they can know that their champion has been appreciated here in All Ages of Geek TV. But anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy this episode. Again, be sure to check out all the links in the description down below for Twitter, Patreon, Twitch, and all of our fun, awesome links that you can find down there. We upload a ton of content for you guys, so if you aren't following us, be sure to follow us soon. But anyway, guys, you stay weird, you stay wonderful, and you stay awesome, my friends. And until the next video, embrace your inner fangirl and your inner fanboy every single day. Bye, guys.